Hey, what's going on everybody? In this video, we're going to be looking at a burner I'm designing that's going to be part of a five burner array for an agricultural weed management device that um, somebody in California has asked me to develop for them. We're just going to be taking a look at it. I'm trying to make a nice wide flame. In this first test that we're watching, I'm using a small 4.5 cubic foot per minute air compressor. And um, it's really not up to the task to give us as much force as we could get out of this burner. But nonetheless, it does exhibit some of the features of the flattened out flame, that's, which gives you a little bit more of a kill rate per you know unit time. Definitely better to fan that flame out like that. So for the most part, it, uh, the second test is going to have a 6.5 horsepower gas compressor hooked up to it which is going to give us a little more oomph but as you can see here it's got a fairly nice flame if you could imagine five of these burners being connected to that unistrut it would um, have a substantial effect with just a very short residence time so what we're going to do is we have run this thing through these weeds trying to find the before footage of this area and tomorrow we're going to go out and take a look at it and see what this um, simple little pass has done to it. We're also going to hit the trampoline that's in the backyard there and hit the weeds with it just briefly. I'm not going to sit there and scorch them to death. This guy has 50 acres. He ain't got time to be sitting there melting plants. We want to see what the flame can do with just a real short hit. Which, by the way, I'm totally blowing that in this little section right here. I don't know what I'm doing. I guess I'm trying to burn them weeds down. I wanted to just do one pass and end it. But uh, I think I'm just kind of looking at the flame for the most part. Hard telling what I was thinking at this point. But as you can see, the flame length does grow when it hits certain areas in the weeds, which is kind of cool, which gives you a little bit more reach. So... Like I said, this is just one burner, and the amount of air I'm giving it is just not quite adequate. It could do so much better than this. So let's take a look at um, the trampoline, and then we'll take a look at the 6.5 horsepower air compressor connected to it. Okay, we're just going to do a quick run on these weeds that are a little bit more reasonable for this test. I'm going to hit it twice. I'm going to go one direction, then I'm going to back, back over it to represent a multiple burner array and then we're going to take a look at it in about seven hours and then we'll take a look at it um, like in a day or two so that's why I was doing the multiple pass I'm thinking I knew there had to be some reason behind why because I, I went into this knowing I just wanted to do a single quick pass but now thinking about it that we're gonna have five burners on here this is more appropriate to do two passes. this is about seven hours later I come outside after I woke up, and things look pretty darn dead. I mean, it didn't look like this at all when I left. It looked like I barely did anything. So hopefully tomorrow we'll see some serious distress. And I didn't want to hit it too hard. I just wanted to give it a brief encounter just to see how much damage it would do. Okay, here's a quick little before clip of that back area that I briefly hit with the torch. Probably could have done a little less. And there is the after. I should have just did one swipe, one pass. That probably would have did just as much. There's the after. And now we're going to take a look at some nighttime visuals of this flame to get a better grasp of how wide it actually is so I can determine how many of these burners we want to put on this unistrut. It looks to me like we're getting a flame that's approximately one foot wide and that's going off the marks that I put down there on the board. You can see the feathers start to lick way out to that distance towards the end there. I'm very pleased that this nozzle works as well as it does right off the bat. Now you will notice some inconsistencies in the flame profile. A lot of that's from the wind. Some of that's for the simple fact I have yet to dial in the nozzle. The slightest little movement on that nozzle can drastically change the flame profile and the heating characteristics observed on the exterior of the combustion chamber. You'll often see irregular heating patterns and that's a result of that nozzle being out of alignment sometimes as little as a sixteenth of an inch. 
And if you think about it, because of the the arc of a second, the um, irregularity is exponential. If you're out a sixteenth of an inch at your origin, six inches away, that sixteenth of an inch can represent a quarter inch to a half inch discrepancy in your target. See here how I'm getting some irregular heating to the left side. We just have to shim up our nozzle with um, either copper shims or some other mechanism. It's just one of those things. The wind is also blowing on this beautiful flame, I might add. Man, that thing is awesome. I want to thank Alex, or is it Eric? I'm sorry, I'm working with so many people right now. I want to thank Eric for inspiring this build. He requested a wider, flatter flame. What I am observing in this test is that if we flatten the beak to a narrower height, we would get a wider flame. See how it just kind of gives up on the edges there? Like, yeah, we don't even need this area. There's just too much area there for that much flame and its velocity. But I feel like if we restricted the flow a little bit by tapering down the beak on the exterior or possibly just narrowing it even more. That would possibly give us a wider fan. As you can see on the marks on the board, the feathers do somewhat come out to about the one foot point there. Not 100%, but... Here, let's take a little side view of that event. I turned it up to full fuel, I think, or something. Let me see that. That's probably full power right there, I'm thinking. I can't remember. The wind is totally botching the test. We're well over two foot there, as you can see. We're start, starting to ground on fire. We are definitely getting a one foot wide flame. If you look here, see those two lines? That represents a foot. And those feathers are definitely encompassing that entire foot zone. You can see there the irregularity I was talking about from the nozzle. Look at that wind just blowing me. Kind of sucks. But, uh, Nonetheless, this is a pretty extraordinary nozzle. I'm very happy with the performance. All I got to do is just dial in that nozzle and we'll get an even better flame than what we're seeing there. That's typical for when I build these. That's why I don't just ship them. I have to start them up and make these little minute adjustments. Very minute. Like sliding pieces of paper thin metal in as shims type stuff. You don't have to. As you can see, the thing runs just fine, but what will happen is in the cold spots, you'll get an accumulation, which will then cause vortices and eddies that are not necessarily in conducive to optimum combustion. So one really has to pay attention to what is and is not important. It may seem okay now, but what happens when the customer's calling me up in three weeks wanting to know why this thing won't light anymore? Well... That's why I dial these nozzles in for you guys. Because those little seemingly just mundane things can really turn into a serious problem down the line. And if you've got a process you're not paying attention to and you've got a burner that just goes out on you, uh, that's pretty bad. Right there, we just hit an air bubble. And I wanted to show you guys what happens. I lit that right back up. But I just wanted to illustrate the whole possibility of shutdown that was an air bubble induced shutdown and I just wanted to show you guys what can happen if you don't dial these nozzles in just right if you don't get those burnt if I had that whole throat white hot like that instead of just the left side we won't get an accumulation of unburnt fuel on the left side of that throat which we are going to have at this point it's also good to run these burners on a very lean, hot burn when you're done with them for the day, just for a couple of seconds to burn out any carbon. That can be done by reducing the fuel to the point the flame almost goes out, but maintain maximum air. And that will make the combustion chamber glow red hot, and that will burn off any unburnt fuel that is accumulated, or just residual carbon and things that might be found in waste oil, french fry crumbs or motor oil particles, who knows what. So I'm babbling at this point, so I'm going to shut up. Okay, when I describe a lean burn, this is what I'm talking about here. I'm going to turn down the fuel, but we're going to leave the air the same. 
And what that does is cause a super hot flame. Oxygen rich. See how the combustion chamber is already starting to turn red hot as a result of that adjustment? This condition is self-cleaning. The burner will clean itself as it runs. See how we're starting to get that right side red hot even. So I do definitely want to adjust that nozzle to avoid any irregular combustion byproduct buildup. Now I'm turning it back up there. Man, that flame is just too cool, isn't it? So here's another shot. I'm pretty sure I turn it down here again in a second. Yeah, there it is right there. That's self-cleaning mode right there. Definitely need to adjust that nozzle, but cool as heck nonetheless. I'm really liking this thing. So that, that is how you would want to run it when you were done with it for the day, just for a couple of seconds. So I'm going to end it at this, fellas. Hope you guys enjoyed the test. Thanks again, Eric. Appreciate it. Also, we are going to get a look at this thing burning at night. You can't see anything. It's a beautiful blue flame with this vegetable oil. But um, it's doing us no justice during the day. I just am um, making true of my word here. I don't know where I'm going to be this evening. So hopefully we'll be able to fire this thing up for at least 10 minutes and take a look at that flame in some visible conditions.